Good morning and welcome to Litmus Test. Today in our second part of uh, thermochemistry, we're going to look at some of the math and some of the ideas behind all this. Um, we looked yesterday, last time, not yesterday, last time we looked at the uh, idea of melting points. We looked at our tower of temperature. Remember it's very tall. Remember that some of our common melting stuff, iron, is closer to the top than not. Most of the stuff on here will melt with one piece of charcoal, except stone, which, you know, makes lava, which is not that high up on the tower of temperature. So, I mean, like, there's iron right there, and there's like osmium, and we can use charcoal to melt that and that. So why not lava? I don't know. Some other things we should talk about when we talk about our stuff. First of all, here's all of our metals. Um, you know, we have a, a full stack of each of these metals here that we're ready to melt. And we have some charcoal. And I've picked this idea because everyone knows that a piece of charcoal will melt eight pieces of stuff. Right? So eight pieces of wood, eight ingots, eight ores, whatever. One piece of charcoal or coal will smelt eight things. And we know that smelting takes ten seconds. So a piece of charcoal has 80 seconds of burning time in it. But time is not the same thing as energy, even though they're closely related. So they're not the same, so that's not a good enough answer for us to say, well, charcoal has 80 seconds of burning time in it. We need to know how much energy a piece of Minecraft charcoal has. And it's not really good to analyze the oak wood for this when we've got, you know, metals that have this thermochemistry data and numbers that we can use, we, like, you know, the temperature tower out there. I put a lot of work into that. I like an Excel spreadsheet and everything. So, <clears throat> one of the other nice things about the metals is that the metals form blocks. And we know that a block in Minecraft is nine ingots, makes a block. We know that a block takes up one cubic meter of space, one meter on all sides, so one cubic meter of space. Therefore, ingot, since there's nine of them, one ingot must take up one ninth of a block. So, nine ingots stack up to a block, therefore, one ninth cubic meter in an ingot. Now we have a volume. With a volume, we can consider some other stuff, like the weather. Again, every day, I swear. Normally, I would like that. Not in these videos, though. Should have moved somewhere else. Should have moved somewhere else. If we have a list of the densities, gosh, I wonder where the list of densities is, we can calculate from the volume and that long list of numbers the mass of an ingot. Because we'll know the volume at blah blah blah, we know the density in there at blah blah blah, so we can get the mass of that ingot. With the mass of that ingot we can use the molar mass. If only we had a big table of molar masses somewhere, gosh, such a mystery, we can find the uh, number of moles that is in an ingot. So we can take an ingot, which we know is a certain volume. We can then use that volume and the density in this book to uh, find the mass of an ingot. We can use the mass and the molar mass to get the number of moles in an ingot. But how does that help us answer the question, about specific heat and temperature diffusion and what are those words and what's that have to do with charcoal? We're getting there. Look on the right hand side, you'll see that specific heat is joules per mole Kelvin. So that's just a fancy way of saying it takes a certain amount of energy, which we measure in joules, to make a certain amount of stuff go up in temperature by a certain amount of temperature. In other words, it might take 10 joules, or 10 units of energy, to increase the temperature of something by 10 degrees C, or Kelvin, or Fahrenheit, you can convert however you want. Um, so that's just a number that tells you, it just tells you how easy it is to heat something up. How easy or how hard is it to raise the temperature, or lower the temperature of something. Water has a relatively high specific heat compared to many other things, like metals, Water uh, stores a lot of heat when it's hot. This is why boiling water is really bad to reach into, in addition to the fact that it's very hot. Um, 
That's also why water and food take a long time to heat up and a long time to cool down. You'll notice that the pan will get hot much faster than the water will because metals tend to have a much lower specific heat. They heat up faster and more easily than, uh, than water does. Um, we also look at this other thing here called heat effusion. The heat effusion is in kilojoules per mole, so it's just uh, an amount of energy per amount of stuff. And the heat effusion number that says if we know exactly like if, if we know how much uh, sorry I have that in there somewhere. The heat effusion says if we have a piece of stuff, an ingot, at the melting point how much energy do we have to add to break all of the atomic bonds and molecular bonds and actually melt the stuff? It's at the melting point. How much energy does it take to push it over and it'll just get it into melting? That's the heat of fusion. So before we go into all of that, a couple things. First, we have this all these numbers written down, so we don't really have to go look them up. Remember we looked at the melting points with the tower I will try to design some ranking and visualization for these numbers as well. But um, for now, I'd just like to point out that heat suffusion are in kilojoules and specific heats are in joules, meaning that the heat suffusion are a thousand times more joules than sp the specific heats. So that's an idea, a first thing right away. I'm not even going to try and show that in the world. That's a thousand times. This is really like a thousand three hundred joules compared to 24 joules, all right? But that's just to melt something for a specific heat is to actually get it hot in the first place. Uh, again, note that steel, because steel is not an element, steel has its own units, steel has its own uh, data, so all the steel data will be on this page if we ever need it and again. Note that steel is given in grams and kilograms instead of moles because since it's not a substance, with a pure you know, substance, pure composition, it's really hard to define moles for it. Instead, it's a lot easier to just stick with kilograms and grams. So when we get to doing mass with steel, we'll you know, realize that it's, it's pretty straightforward. Finally, and maybe I should have done this first, but what is a joule of energy? That's a joule. A joule of energy is approximately the amount of energy given off by dropping an apple from, you know, arm height. So this action here, probably a little bit more than one joule, probably a little bit more than one joule, but it's on the order of a couple joules at least. So a joule of energy is not a lot of energy. It's not like we're throwing this apple very far, right? Uh, it's not like we're jumping. Jumping takes a lot more energy than just throwing an apple. So with that said, maybe that gives you some idea that these numbers, not those, these numbers, that's dropping 24 apples, or really that's just picking up 24 apples. And that would raise a mole of copper by one Kelvin. If you just, you know, picked up 24 apples, transferred all that energy into a mole of copper. How much is a mole of copper? Well, a mole of copper is, here it is, a mole of copper is 63.55 grams. Well, how much is that? That's like, well, we'll say that's 64 grams. So pick up 24 apples, that raises 64 grams of copper by one degree. Uh, how much is 64 grams of copper? It sounds like it should be like 64 pennies, but maybe pennies are two grams? Well, our density says that copper is about nine, and well, if we go back to 63 for copper and uh, 63 is conveniently divisible by 9, coming out to, you know, 7. 7 times 9, 63. So that's nice, right? Um, of course that's nice. Right, so 63, um, that means that a mole of copper, 63 grams, divided by 9 is 7 cubic centimeters. Um, so, 7 milliliters, which uh, doesn't sound like a lot. A milliliter is kind of small. In fact, that's about like 7 pennies, 10 pennies. That's not a lot. I mean, and pennies aren't even copper anymore. You have to get like the old pennies for that to be true. But, 
about that much. Seven to ten pennies would get you about one mole of copper, which would be to raise that amount of energy, um, to raise that amount of copper up by one degree Celsius, it would take the same amount of energy as lifting 24 apples. That's a way to think about this. So remember, we lift an apple, that's one joule. If we lift a thousand apples, that's a kilojoule. And if we want to raise temperatures, we look here at the specific heat and we say, well, it would take 24 apples worth of energy to raise the um, one mole of copper by one degree in temperature. And if we want to know how much a mole is, we can combine density and molar mass. And we can get either a mass or a volume out of it. And then we can convert that volume to something that we're familiar with in everyday life. All right, so those are the values and the numbers that we're going to use going forward in this uh, series. Uh, specific heat, heat infusion, these are the main ideas. These are just ways of saying how much energy does it take to make something hot or cold, and how much energy does it take to melt something once it gets up there. To really answer our questions, we're going to have to ask both of these questions separately, because first we have to take our room temperature stuff, our room temperature iron grit, heat it up to the melting point, and then melt it to make it into an ingot. So we need to consider both the specific heat and heat effusion. Additionally, we're going to have to look at the densities of all of these to find out which one of these has the most stuff in it. Like, we know gold is really heavy, and we know osmium, where that is, is really heavy, and lead is really heavy, but are they, like, just because they're really heavy, do they have the most number of atoms in it? Do they have the most moles in them per ingot? Since ingots are, you know, are our standard. Um, and once we've got figured all that out, then we have to say a piece of charcoal can melt any of them. What's the hardest one to melt? That must be how much energy is in a piece of charcoal. So stay tuned for next time. We'll start diving into some of that and more. Until then, stay safe and don't catch on fire.